Welcome to this BBTV Business Podcast, coming to you from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. Now, this is episode two in a trilogy revolving around this book, Truly of the Moment, Leading with Love and Laughter. It's so appropriate to see what here at BizVision and to me, TV, we, we see as the right makeup of a today's leader. Now, in episode one of the trilogy, co-author Zena Such persuasively explained to us the concept that she and colleague Patrick Malone propose. So let's welcome her again. Hello, Zena. Hello, Malcolm. So great to be back. I'm still in the Chesapeake Bay. How are you doing? Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> it's still warm here as well, which is wonderful. <laughs> but the thunderstorms come tomorrow. So let's get on, you know, okay. uh, let's get started on episode two of your BBTV Spotcast trilogy. Now, as I said, I love the concept and I think it's so apt for today's leaders. But it's likely that change will have to happen. Now, I can't see any Disney fairy dust happening and suddenly a leader and the whole company are a place of love and laughter, you know, just click of the fingers and the fairy godmother makes you laugh and laughter. So how does a leader make the change and what guidelines need to be created? Surely there has to be a red line not to be crossed somewhere. Absolutely. I, I think one of the things to remember is that change like this does not happen overnight, as you said. And walking in one day and deciding I'm going to be that leader, I'm going to tap into my loving heart and I'm going to find all the joy in my life and I'm going to share it. It, it will take time for each leader within the organization to be able to start becoming comfortable with it, number one. And that takes that self-awareness. And we talked about that in the first episode of the trilogy. We have to be comfortable with ourselves. We have to know ourselves well enough to know how much of that love can we exude for our fellow man. And that's mm -hmm. the way we approach this. We're not talking about the kind of love that, you know, you walk in a bar and you see somebody yeah. and you're immediately attracted yeah. and, and, you yeah. know, you head over there and buy them a drink. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the love of humanity, the love for your fellow employee, the love for the human being that is in there with you, and the connection that you have that automatically comes from the mission of your organization. Mm. So we don't pull that apart. We don't say you're looking at this human being as a separate entity from the work. What we're saying is you can love them because of their contributions, because of the person that they are, the different talents that they bring, for the time that you take to get to know them as a human being. That takes time, as you hear me say over and over again, it takes time. It also takes time for that relationship to be reciprocal. And that's what we say to people, please don't push the envelope. Don't expect that overnight in one week, in one month, things are gonna change. Trust takes time to build. And if you were one of those leaders who didn't exhibit this on a day-to-day -day basis, didn't show this in the way that you speak to people, the way you run your meetings, how much time you take to get to know them, um, to get to know who they are as people, and all of a sudden start doing that, you might get a little pushback. And so one of the red lines we say is, don't rush the process. Understand that it takes time for that trust to build, that relationship to build. It takes time for you to know how much you're able to exhibit that in an authentic and real way. The last thing we want is for people to go in and just say, oh, you know, I asked people these following questions and I got to know them. I'm done for the day. We need you to constantly be living in that heart space. I call it a heart space. And, and with the laughter as well, coming in gradually and introducing one story of something you have done or something that you've experienced that made you chuckle or an observation that you've made that others have made. It, it really helps bring the team together. It helps people understand that you as a leader are just as human as they are. It sort of, of what we say levels the playing field a little bit. It brings the leader down from that pedestal and says, hey, you're just like me. I get it. You see it and I see it. And that, and that really does make that connection, that relationship develop. Um, the red line with love and laughter, I sort of mentioned it a little bit, is Again, when we talk about love, we're not talking about the kind of love that you re read about in a romantic novel. We're talking about the love for your fellow human being, really tapping into the true, genuine appreciation that you have for another person who's doing the same work that you need them to do 
to be able to accomplish that mission. Um, the, the laughter line, we call it the red line, is make sure that you are not trying to be that stand-up comedian. You can do fun things in team meetings, you know, do the funniest hat or the, you know, the best song and just bring some joy and uh, levity to the team, to the group. But don't exclude anyone. It's mm. not about telling the best joke. It's not about picking on a certain person or a group of people. We say that the kind of laughter we like is the self-deprecating, where yeah. you your, your humility is evident. You're comfortable enough with yourself to make mm. fun of yourself, to make fun of something you said or did at home or in the grocery store or something that people can really relate to on that on that common man, common woman, common person level. Uh, something we all share, something we can all relate to is what we talk about. And we all have those stories yeah, because yeah. I, I assure you, we all have those stories. So if you can share it as a leader, if you can start walking into those areas, you can very slowly change that culture of your organization. Mm. And another thing I just wanted to chat to the sneak in here, Sina, is that um, not everybody in a business feels comfortable with love and laughter, especially introverts. And, uh, you know, they and at the moment, a lot of introvert people are even more protective of their space because of of COVID. Uh, so how do does a, a leader communicate to people that, you know, this is for you just the same? So um, I, I thought you were going to stump me, but I'm glad. I'm glad I do have an answer for you. Uh, the introvert, and we hear this quite often, is, um, you know, I'm not a huggy, huggy person. Don't come over and hug me. I assure you, uh, we are not saying for people to go around hugging each other. Yeah. And yeah. the other thing to remember is that introverts, just like extroverts, do know what it feels like to be cared for, to be loved, to be valued to be appreciated, to be noticed, even mm. if it's not noticed in the same way you would notice an extrovert. And so the love part of it is it's a given. People like to know that they are valued, that they are cared for. So I, when people say an you know, introvert doesn't like it, I, I would argue that. And I would say they like it. They just don't want to see it in the same way exhibited yeah. towards them. And that's where awareness, not only the leader's awareness of their own tendencies, but to get to know each of your employees, those are your direct reports, how do they function? Yeah. Um, I also find that over time, I mean, introverts, I, have, uh, I don't think there is a monopoly on who can find laughter or who laughs at what, you know, at what types of things. But introverts experience the same things extroverts in their day-to-day -day life. And if a leader is being self-deprecating and, and you know, humble and sharing a story about themselves, I assure you that that introvert may not laugh out loud, but inside they're thinking to themselves, wow, you yeah. know, this person can see the human being in me and, and it relates to me. I was, I was just having a bit of a grin there when you were saying that, because there's a lovely bit in your book where you talk about dogs are laughing at you, <laughs> particularly yes. when they keep moving, moving the ball and everything. Thanks, Zena. Now, let me remind our audience of the website or the URL of you and Patrick, which is... Uh, obviously, viewers, you can see it on the screen, but let me spell it out for listeners. It's all the W's, all the W's, such S-U-T-C-H, S-U-T-C-H, Malone, M-A-L-O-N-E, suchmalone.com. Zena and Patrick's book, this one, is called Leading with Love and Laughter, and is published by BK Publishers. I trust by now you're as excited as me about Zena and Patrick's concept. Don't have a closed mind on this. I know from since the pandemic started, I've done over 600 interviews with business and thought leaders here at BVTV, that the future proof business will be a conscious business led by a conscious leader. And this book, Leading with Love and Laughter, will be on the bookshelf of every successful business. Thanks, Zena. Thank you. And lead with love and laughter wherever you go.